Hi everybody, this is Gidon again, and today I would like to explain App Inventor Part 2, The Block Editor. So, we have all this stuff, now I'm going to explain to you what the actual code is. So, if we go here in the blocks, we're going to see this code called screen1.initialize. That says when the screen starts. Then I'm going to make it say avoid the candy corn by call text to speech dot message block. Then I'm going to make my health label and health count label unvisible because I only want them to show the score, the health in the end. Okay? That's not really what we did in Scratch, but that's what we're doing in App Inventor. <clears throat> and now I'm going to reset my labels. The health count label, the banana count label, and the candy count label. So now I'm going to enable all my characters and clocks. And everything that we're going to be using in the program. I'm enabling them. So now I'm going to set my monkey's position like we did last time. So I'm going to set his X to 64 and his Y to 222. That's just a, p a random position. So don't mistake it for moving things. So now I made two functions, move banana and move candy corn. So what are those two functions? First of all, I gotta introduce you to a function very quickly called wait. So you see, I made these two variables here, which is speed, which gives it the speed to move the monkey and stuff, and the time, which is like a timer. The global time you see here, that's the wait, that's the time, and I'm sending it to zero. So, what does this to do? That is a procedure. Procedures are functions. And you know what a function is? A function is something that you use to keep repeating chunks of code. I'm going to call this one wait, and I'm going to set my time to delay clock dot system time meaning I'm going to count every single little second that's what this little line means now I'm going to set the time to the global time plus 200 so I'm giving it the amount of time I actually want it to do so remember delay clock that system time it counts the seconds and global time when it plus 200 actually says how much it wants it to wait. That stands for 200 milliseconds. So now, if the delay clock system time is lesser than the global time, then it really won't tell you what to do there. It just continues to 200. So that is called wait which is what helps us wait for random seconds for the banana to move and the candy corn to move. So here are my functions, move banana and move candy corn. If you see here, move banana, I enable my banana and I make my banana unvisible so that it can choose wisely without being seen. And I do it a random integer, the X can be anywhere in the screen, and I set the Y to 7. So that's the top of the screen. Then I'm going to call my function wait, which means I'm going to wait 200 milliseconds. And I'm going to call a fu another function I made called glide banana. So what is this glide banana? If you see, I'm going to be looking a little bit. Because I know I can find this kind of stuff easily here. 
if I can spot it quickly. Where is Glide Banana? I need, okay, here's my, so Glide Banana, I'm making my banana visible again, and this is the code for making it come down, whoop, onto the monkey. I'm going to make it visible, and I'm going to make his heading 270. So remember how I let, I told you about the directions? It's like the same thing for the heading, only the heading's different. So I think 270 would be down, and then I think um, 90 would be up, 180 would be to the left, and zero would be to the right. I really, well, 270 I know goes down. That's what I know. So now I'm going to make the interval 50. And the interval is like the timer interval. Basically, it sets how deep it's going to go onto the earth. And then I'm going to make the speed 10. Now, if you see here, I have glide candy corn, which is a little different because the speed is 30. That's because I want the candy corn to move a little faster, so it's more tricky, because in real life, it's hard to avoid a candy corn. Not impossible, but hard. Now, in move candy corn, I'm doing the same thing, except it's the candy corn, and here, I'm calling the function wait, but instead I'm calling glide candy corn, the one which is faster. <laughs> now, I would like to explain my buttons. Well, actually not yet, but now I would like to explain collision. So what does collision mean? It's like when a character <coughs> hits another character. Like if this is a character and this is a character, then it's where, say, this character comes and they just boom, hit each other. So if it's with the banana sprite and it hits the monkey sprite, and the banana sprite hasn't already been hit, like it's visible, then I'm going to make it un invisible again. And I'm going to set thy health count label, remember labels. I'm going to set the text to, excuse me, a one more point, health count label text plus one. So, for the banana one, it's the same thing, except it's the banana count label. So now I'm going to show you what happens for the candy corn. So if the candy corn hits the monkey sprite and it's visible, then it sets the candy corn visible to false. But this time, it makes the health count label minus. So it will take away that point we want. And then it will make the candy count label text to one more. And did I say for both of them, it says something, like it used the text-to-speech. Here in the banana sprite, it says text-to-speech message, pick a random list. And this is the list we're making. it. We can say keep it up, keep being healthy, or great job. But then if they hit the candy corn, we say stop being unhealthy, not again, and bad choice. And if you see here, it's like we're calling that function wait. Only we're setting the global time to 50. <clears throat> I'm going to explain my clocks, which is what gives it the time to move the thing. When the candy corn clock's time is up, I'm going to move the candy corn. And when the banana clock's time is up, I'm going to call move banana. Those functions I explained to you. So now I'm going to explain my buttons. I have the right button, which is if it's clicked, I set the monkey sprites X 
to Monkey Sprite X plus Global Speed. So remember, plus is to the right, and minus is to the left. <clears throat> I don't want that to be going on right now. So now I made a restart button here. It's doing like the same thing, only it isn't... If you see here, it's like the same thing. The same thing as the other one, the screen one dot initialize, only it's on a button this time. Like when their time goes up for the game for playing. So here's my timer clock. I think this is the last thing. So when the timer clock hits the timer and it's done, it basically sets the health label visible to true. So it reveals how much health you have. And then <clears throat> it basically makes everything enabled to false, meaning not, not enabled. And so that nothing will run. And then it will say this. If the health count label text is greater than zero, then it will say, call great work, keep it up. Else, meaning if it's the other way around, which is it's less than zero or if it is zero, then I'm going to call the message to say, take better care of yourself. <clears throat> And that, I believe, is the code. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy and keep practicing App Inventor and get good at coding. Thanks.